Edifier, as an audio device company, has been on the up and up in the past couple of years. In fact, I have seen an increasing number of viewers on this channel own something from the brand. And I think that's partly because their products generally sound good, have solid features, are relatively affordable compared to the competition, and also refreshingly takes a slightly different path in their design language. Today guys, we have their new lower mid-ranger in the house. This is the Edifier W240TN. I know the name sucks, but do you want to see if this is dope and open, whether you should plunk your cash down for it? Well, in that case, let's check out the rest of this video after these messages. <laughs> With the W240TN, best name ever, it retails for 80 bucks and it comes in two different colors. This one, white and also black, and it has Bluetooth 5.3 with support for, get this, SBC only. If you're looking for AAC or Aptex, you're gonna have to look somewhere else, guys. However, in the business end of things, all is not lost. In these buds, they're coaxial drivers. One is a 10 millimeter driver supported by another six millimeter one. We'll talk more about sound quality later on. Battery life is really strong too. 6.8 hours with ANC on at 65% volume. And there's a gaming mode. It reduces that to about 4.5 hours. All pretty darn strong. IP55 water dust resistance, and there are two mics per side, one at the bottom here, and another one right behind the ear tip. I'm not sure if you can see that. There's a venting port on this side. However, what you don't find here is multi-point. There's also no wear detection or Qi charging for the case. The design goes with this angular look. There's a lot of straight edges on the case and some of them on the earbuds themselves. And the more I look at it too, at least from this angle, the earbuds poking out like this, it kind of looks like inoculation bottles, right? The caps and everything, you stick the needle in there. Uh, another nice touch is check out this Knight Rider lighting. Oh yes. Uh, build quality is pretty spot on as well. One of the tighter lit seams I've ever seen in a while, uh, this year at least, because from the front, it looks like just one monolithic piece of marble, doesn't it? There is some creaking though when I squeeze it, you can hear that. Uh, but the grip is pretty good as well. The plastic is not overly slippery. And this uh, angular design also helps a lot. Really nice. Um, there's no wireless charging, as I mentioned, USB-C charging port right there. Reset slash pairing button is also right there. Um, and the lid also kind of locks in place, pretty darn nice. The magnet is also strong. The cavity is halfway down the case itself, and thankfully the charging contacts are towards the top so gunk doesn't get there, get all the way down there and stay there and corrode this thing. Uh, the earbuds themselves are nice. Let me try to focus on this. Um, it's easy to grip because of the dual driver system, the bigger one at the bottom and towards the top right here. This is controlled by buttons though, uh, single, double, triple tap as well as hold, and that's what it does. Uh, charging contact is right there, I showed you the mics earlier. Let's check how fast the tips come off and reinstall. The mesh covered grill is right there, it's oval by the way. And when you pop, you just have to make sure that you align it right. And of course, on camera, it's slower. Um, it's actually not bad. It's not the most supple silicone, but it is very comfortable nonetheless. And you pop it on, it is pretty darn quick. And since we're here, let's do the shake test as well. I like to do it and keep the lid open, by the way. I like to do this. Yeah, it's a big fail. And I do this because, yeah, it's partly for fun, but just in case you have this in your hands and you drop it at the gym or something, you want to know when this hits the floor, whether the earbuds go flying over the place under the lockers or anything. And if they have strong magnets, you have more uh, re reassurance that it won't go everywhere. Here we are at the home screen in the Edifier Connect app. It is quite bare as you can see, but there's also a pleasant polished simplicity when using it. It's easy to pick up and figure out where most things are for the most part. Although I do wish there was a dark mode. So on the first screen, battery life is here at the top. We can find out the case levels and your earbud levels. Noise controls are below that. Ambient sound is the only one that has a strength slider that goes from minus three all the way to plus three. Swiping left brings you to the EQ page. There are two presets. One is called classic, the other one is dynamic. If you need to find out what they are, use the question mark. Um, and then there's also a customizable four band EQ. Uh, and here you can alter the frequency right below there at the bottom. Uh, you can alter the frequency of individual bands and then adjust your width as well as the gain, which is pretty darn cool. And then save it and share it if you want to. Swiping left and back at the home screen again, swiping left uh, brings you to the gaming on off screen. Deeper settings are access to the gear icon at the top here. Of note, you can turn off the buds directly from the app or choose the on off timer that ranges from 10 minutes all the way up to one and a half hours. And finally, you can customize your controls. Although you can't set independent controls for the left 
or right sides, it has to be done as a pair. So for example, double press for next track means pressing twice on left and right will advance the song. It would have been nice to allow left to do next track and right to do previous track. One cool thing that I haven't shown you yet is that the app has this widget on the notification bar where you can quickly select different sound modes. Right now it's noise cancellation. You can go off or switch between different EQs, which is awesome. And also turn on and off game mode or directly launch the app with that button. That's really nice to have. We're outdoors doing the Bluetooth range test, guys, and I have Love Lockdown by Kanye West playing on these edifiers. And uh, these earbuds have, let's see, Bluetooth 5.3. And so should last around 32, 35 feet before we start getting a signal cut off. But I'm going to test that, push it in a little bit and see what happens. So the phone is at the end of my deck there. And where I'm standing is around 25 feet. If, by the way, you're wondering what that is, that's my wife's foldable kayak. We've had this for a few years now. Love it. And you've, you've probably seen it in some of my other videos and you're like, what is that? That is a kayak, believe it or not. Oh, I just got a signal uh, dropout. It's right around specs, uh, close to it anyway, 32, 33 feet. So yeah, uh, it's well within range, but I'm gonna keep walking until we get a complete uh, disconnect signal, if we do. At this point, music is pointless to listen to. It's just, you know, cutting in and out. Right now, it's actually just dead quiet. Yeah, nothing. I'm not even getting a disconnect or anything. I doubt, let me see. If you will play, there is something. I got a, t let's see, I didn't get a tone yet. I thought that was a tone, but that was the music uh, cutting in. Oh, there's, why am I getting disconnected right here? So that's weird. It's a slight delay from like, it just gave up the ghost and then like, and said, hey, uh, I'm just gonna disconnect right here. Um, you can see the fit of these. They kind of look like, you know, like some people say Frankenstein bolts. Oh, it's back in uh, range again, it says. Let me see if it'll play. There you go. Kanye is singing in my ears again. Um, you can see the fit again of these. They protrude out. Some of you may or may not like uh, the shape of it. And also the color choices do make a difference. White does pop. I prefer lighter colors just for filming, but uh, you know, for this case, black would have been probably a better case. I'm gonna run. Oh, these things shift a lot. So, no, not for running, definitely not for the treadmill. If you're, you know, doing weights or stuff like that, rock climbing or anything like that, totally fine cycling. But um, every pounding on my footsteps, you can feel it. I had to be careful because the rocks here are slippery. We couldn't have picked a better time because the roads are wet. And so wet tires, as they go through uh, a situation like this, they produce a much higher uh, pitch uh, quality to it. And here come some cars. You can hear how these mics or these earbuds handle it. I'll tell you what, not very good at all. This is one of the worst I've heard this year, if not ever. At Ifio, you need a lot of work here. When even in a quiet environment like this right now, no cars, it's barely keeping up. It's really soft. But the moment like traffic comes up, there's a bus I think I saw coming up this way. Um, it just struggles. It's really, really bad. Here comes a truck. You can hear for yourselves testing, testing, one, two, three. It's really. Uh, no, so sorry. Uh, let's head back to uh, the studio and yeah, ponder on this. But there is one saving grace. When you're in noise cancellation mode, you get a phone call. These earbuds transfer into pass-through mode just for your safety to keep you aware of your surroundings. If anything, Edifier knows a thing or two about sound tuning. From their new buds to their TWS-1 to this uncreatively named model, there is a certain quality or crispness. <laughs> I can't say the word right. Every time I say it, it sounds like Christmas. Crispness to their sound. So for bass, for example, these 240s play it smooth and engaging, though minus the slam that most bass heads are looking for, but I think for most people it's just right. The highs can extend and live there for an extended amount of time without getting harsh or overly bright. Tribal detail in instruments and vocals also come in nice and clear. Now, so far, with how I've described the lows and highs, you'd think that the mid-tones would be like mired in dullness, right? 
Nuh uh, no sir. It somehow manages to stay energetic, producing sparkles in places such as vocals. Well, if you listen closely, yes, there is some muddiness, but let's not forget how much these cost. Amplification, let's not forget that one, is another strong suit here because these get plenty loud at 100% volume, which also means the buds are also audible at 10% volume. The Edifier Connect app has a couple of functions that I actually find cool and or useful. The 4-band EQ seems limiting, which it sorta is, it's better than nothing though, but the app allows you to choose what frequency and subsequent size of the bandwidth you want for each of the four bands, rather than the usual predetermined locked-in ones that you find in other manufacturers. Something else I haven't seen before is power controls in the notification bar. As you saw earlier in the app demo, you can switch noise modes and EQ presets quickly on your phone without having to hop into the app. Now, one downer to this though is that the menu stays on as a persistent control notification even if you force quit the app. This thing stays on at the top of your notification bar. You have to force disable it each time, which is a pain. So, Edifier, fix it. As you heard, saw during the outdoor mic test, you best avoid these for phone calls because the noise suppression algorithm sounds like you're trying to make a phone call in the trunk of a car as the mob drives that car into the Hudson River. It's basically pointless. I was thinking it when I first took it out of the box. You're probably thinking it right now. DHRME had it on video first too, but we're all likely in agreement that you'll look like Frankenstein's monster wearing one of these. These things just protrude out like crazy. Another downer to the shape is having most of the weight away from your ears means long-term stability and comfort also suffers. However, there is one possible plus side to the plus size. Edifiers generally bulkier designs might actually give their sound engineers more room to play with. Hence, that's maybe why their sound is all similarly good. But that's just my guess. Edifier definitely has its own way of doing audio. And I don't mean that as a complaint either because even their cheaper stuff sound good and for the most part, it gets better as you hit up the totem pole. So with these 240s sitting right here in the middle somewhere, it excels in sound quality, the general performance, the surprising app experience, and a decent price. However, at this price to feature ratio, there are cheaper contenders out there such as the Soundcore Live A3i or the P3i or the One More Comfort Buds among others. Um, noise cancellation is okay for a bus ride but definitely not for flights or crying babies or flights with crying babies or flying buses with crying babies. What? You, you think I'm making that up? It's real guys because they call those things riding economy on an American Airlines Airbus. Yes. It was not very good, was it? But anyways, with all that said, I'm giving the Edifier W240TN a gear up score of 7.9 out of 10. And this is how I broke it down to get a final score. If you have any questions about how I got there, feel free to comment down below. So friends, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like what I do, if you'd like to see more videos like this, show your support. Thumbs up if you like it, comment nicely down below. Subscribe to this channel, give me the 50,000 subs. We're so far behind, it's not even funny, but you can get me there, we can do it. Share it with your friends and family. Visit me on Patreon as well as use the super thanks button if you like to buy me a cup of coffee or tea or something, that'll be super awesome. And remember, to do something loving and kind for somebody in this world, guys, because guess what? The world needs it more than ever, and it starts with you. I love y'all very much. Peace out, and I'll see you next time.